What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, you guys. Welcome back. Uh, it's Monday. And you already know why I'm here, you guys. This is The Walking Dead. I know I owe y'all a Married to Medicine video. I was not feeling my best this weekend. And I just decided I was not going to do anything but take care of myself, you guys. I've been putting myself on the back burner a lot lately. And I feel it in my body. Anyway, you guys, um, I want to come on here and talk real quick about The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, it wasn't bad. It was kind of all over the place. And it was one of them stalemate episodes where nothing really happens. But we get to see some characters we haven't seen since first episode, which was Gabriel and um, Negan. You know, Negan and Gabriel were stuck in the... Uh, in this trailer with all these walkers and it's really shot beautifully you guys because you can hear the walkers outside and um, it's dark in the trailer it's hot all of that I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and give Gabriel a thumbs up because y'all know Gabriel is a part of the kitty cat I mean the scaredy cat club <laughs> He is known for being a horrible, horrible, scary cat, and he seemed like he got his big boy panties on through this whole um, trailer situation with Negan. I really thought the part where he told Negan he believed that he was spared and he was meant to be in that trailer with him because uh, he was supposed to take his confession, his last confession. I was like, what? That little scene right there was scary. I really believe Gabriel was about this life in that moment. I liked it. That's what made me watch the rest of the episode with such intensity. Um, and they ended up having this conversation back, with, back and forth. Gabriel tried to slip away from Negan because he know he can't trust Negan. He got a shot off. Negan blocked it and... Gabriel went into another room, kind of barricaded himself in, away from Negan, and it was behind that door that he told his confession about, Gabriel told his confession about how he had locked all the saints at the church when everything started to happen, and um, listened to them all die, which, you know, I had forgot about that horrible thing that Gabriel had done. But then um, Negan traded his confession, which was that his wife got sick. She was sick before the um, apocalypse hap happened and uh, he hadn't been shit, uh, ain't shit husband to her. You know, he was cheating on her and treating her any old kind of way you know but she was his first and number one love and um she ended up dying right after the apocalypse i don't know if she died i think she died because of something that somebody bit her or something and he wasn't there for her something something happened anyway i remember thinking that his confession wasn't half as bad as Gabriel's confession. <laughs> In my mind, I feel like he got off easy. Considering some of the horrible stuff that he has done, I was expecting his confession to be a little bit more. Still, it was bad, but I'm just saying I was expecting it to be a little bit more. <clears throat> we also get to visit all the saviors that are trapped inside the saviors number one headquarters because uh, the walkers have been let loose all around the headquarters, so they in there. They don't know when they're going to be able to get out. They don't know when somebody's going to be able to come for them. And it's like a small bit of mutiny. You got Simon, you know, the one with the mustache, the one that intimidates Gregory. And he is Negan's right-hand man. We got uh, old Dirty Jesus, the one with the with the, with the uh, scar on his face, the one that Negan burned, the one who was helping, um, who took the bow and arrow and the motorcycle from uh, our MVP, Daryl. And he is doing his best not to look like the leak. 
Meanwhile, you got Eugene sitting in the midst of all of this looking scared as hell. I mean, he looked like the leak and Dirty Jesus is the one that's the leak. So there's a small mutiny. There's a shot that rings out and Negan them shows up. And how Negan and those got out the trailer, Negan and Gabriel was they covered themselves in the uh, walker guts. You know how they do so they can walk amongst them. We had this moment where we thought that Negan and Gabriel both was gonna be dead behind it, but they ended up coming inside when this small mutiny is happening from all the workers. And the workers bartering with the saviors is that they will work and the saviors will keep them protected. But now it's an uprising because they think Negan is dead. So when they hear the whistle, okay, here come Negan covered in goods and he is pissed with Simon. He won't have a come to Jesus meeting with Simon about how all of this happened, how all of this took place because we see how when Eugene, scaredy cat, jellyback, Eugene showed up initially, y'all know they like the flashback when he showed up initially, how they worked out what he was going to do for Negan to prove that he was down with Negan. He was going to talk his people into surrendering and not working with freaking nose and we all saw that transpire in the first episode but anyway this is prior to that so we flash back to prior to Rick them showing up with the metal cars right before they you know went out to Negan and those went out to confront Nick to see them Rick to see why they was there um, we didn't get to see um, King Ezekiel at all we probably won't see, see King Ezekiel for a couple episodes y'all know he got the get his mind right after seeing Shiva die and losing all his people. Meanwhile, Rick and Daryl are back at the scene where they ran the guy off the road. They shanked the guy, ran him off the road. And they supposed to be getting the guns off the truck that the guy was driving. The guy is crawling along the side of the road and he's bleeding out. They flip him over and Daryl's gonna kill him. But uh, he tells them that all their people dead. And of course, Rick and Daryl know that the people that went to that specific camp was the kingdom, which is King Ezekiel and Carol. So when they say all the people dead, Daryl assumed that, I think he assumed that Killer Carol, shout out to uh, <laughs> Mike B, is dead too. And he, he just, I mean, Y'all know Daryl deal with death and loss in a real, real grimy kind of way. So it's at this moment the plan goes south because he goes to pull um, a crate off the back of this wrecked vehicle that the dude was driving. The dude dead now. And it's explosive. So Daryl takes some of the explosives. He's gonna go back to Negan's main camp where Negan and Gabriel is and just blow it to smithereens. And Rick is like, no, we're not, we're not gonna do that. No, there's 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 workers there, there's families, there's there are innocent people there. We need to give them the opportunity to surrender and leave there, okay? Not just shoot them all up. They just trying to kill the actual saviors, you know. That's what Rick is thinking it. And really, I think Daryl might have been on board with that plan. He might have been cool with it you know it might have been a little easier to deal with him about that subject matter if he wasn't thinking that carol was dead and so they get the fussing and fighting and arguing and rolling around in the dirt like they got shit they ain't got shit to do you know like we ain't in the middle of war they fighting amongst each other and the truck blow up it had already been leaking gas it blow up with the guns all the explosives everything on it it just blows the hell up and they just sitting there looking at it and um daryl decides he gonna go his own way to that camp and rick said well i guess i'm walking and rick walks in the other direction i was like what is we doing what is we doing come on you guys this is the problem this is the problem. We have to establish in the beginning before we even go off the war. What are we gonna do with the people that surrender? What are we gonna do with this? What are we gonna do with that? So we all stay on board. It just seems like everybody got their own agenda as how to handle this situation. And that's fine if 
somebody could get the shit accomplished by themselves. But we already know we need to be all together to get this shit done. It's the same problem we had with old girl last last season where she kept going off half cock trying to kill Negan and that's how we ended up losing one of our most um, valuable players in the game. So anyway, um, let's see what else happened. That's basically it, you guys. That's where we are in the game. We did not see uh, King Ezekiel take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Woo! Take me to the throne. Listen. Waiting to see King Ezekiel again. I just want to see what what we left with, what we got here um, with his whole mental psyche. We didn't see Morgan. What's going on with Morgan? Morgan just aimlessly wandering in the woods. He done built himself, found himself a little cabin. What is he doing? We don't know. We didn't get to visit Maggie and the hilltop. We don't know what's going on with that. So. Um, we it's kind of open ended, you guys, as to what's really happening. But right now, we ain't got nothing but dissension, you guys. Dissension, indecision, and it's not pretty. But that's it, you guys, for the Walking Dead. Um, what about Gabriel? Good for Gabriel. He did try to get a look jelly back there towards the end when he was all kneeled down and covered in blood and all of that. But I think Nigga kind of take has taken to him a little bit but y'all know that could change at any moment especially when you're dealing with a straight up psychopath okay you guys that is it for the walking dead mwah, 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 mwah. until next time honeybees ah!